Hi, I'm Justin. I'm an assistive technology facilitator for the Louisiana Assistive Technology Initiative. Today I'm going to be covering some approaches and perspective that will help you pick the right AAC app for your situation. Now one of the most common misconceptions, and it's based on a lot of antiquated research, is that AAC has to be a hierarchy. That a student has to prove they get cause and effect, that they can turn on a toy by pressing a button, then choose between two real-world objects, cognitively think which object they would prefer, do the same thing with pictures, real-life photos of objects, and then finally being able to make choices with abstract symbols like doodles, drawings that represent real-life objects. This is also where people would learn the letters and the sounds they have and begin to understand that you can build them and make certain phrases and words and you would continue building upon those concepts until you understand what syntax and grammar mean and you would be able to construct paragraphs and papers and able to hold long conversation because you have both the skills in writing with abstract symbols and you have skill at speaking and communicating. If you were supposed to teach AAC to a nonverbal student or child, the way you would teach how to write and put together advanced ideas to go all the way up to grammar, then truly you wouldn't be able to use a AAC device or an app until that fourth stage where they can actually infer from abstract symbols and make choices because there's not a communication system that uses real world pictures because you couldn't do that. How are you going to take so many real world pictures? How are you going to pick a real world picture for the word go or the word make? You have to have abstract pictures and give them meaning. According to the American Speech Language Hearing Association, ASHA, there are not any prerequisite skills to use AAC. In fact, it's encouraged to use AAC whenever there are significant barriers to a student or child's communication. This is all possible because of motor planning. How many times over, let's say, the last six years have you seen a baby pick up a cell phone, swipe, and pick the exact app they wanted? that played music or a video. Uh, do you think that baby can make choices between a lot of real world pictures? Do you think they can interpret symbols? Can they read the words on that phone? Do they even know what an iPhone is? They just know the location. They memorize the location before they fully understand all the meaning. That is how you can teach AAC. In fact, studies show Using AAC, even from the beginning, actually moves along language development. It can be a tool that moves you from cause and effect to talking about real life objects, to talking about pictures, to actually understanding symbols that you've been using instead of just memorizing the location. The best AAC apps keep this motor planning in mind because how would you feel if every day you went to work and the keys on your keyboard changed location? Think of how many times you had to press a key on a keyboard to know intuitively where it is. So from the beginning, a good app has to plan on where things are going to be located and how are you going to keep everything in the same position and not get lost in a bunch of file folders. AAC apps also have to balance this motor planning with core vocabulary. And by core vocabulary, I mean 80% of what we say a day because that very first page needs to be the most common words you use. You can't have 5,000 words on the first page. How could you find anything? Instead, you want words you can use in every environment. And a good example is contrasting it with fringe. Here is some fringe vocabulary words and phrases. Car, home, bathroom, Miss Cindy. These are mostly nouns, words you wouldn't use all during the day 
but could be imported at select times and in certain environments. Um, would you say home at home? Probably not, or certainly not nearly enough. It's not really what you would call front page material on a device. Instead, core vocabulary gives us so much more meaning and detail and versatility because it's mostly verbs, it's action, it is meaning. Maybe instead of saying Miss Cindy, what we really want to say is I need help. And instead of just teaching the word bathroom, the word go can mean so much. Go can mean you're starting. Go means you want somebody to go away. Go means you've got to go to the bathroom. Go means you want to go someplace else in the building. So fringe words are important, but core words are how you actually get meaning from those fringe, and they're the focal point for good AAC apps. So in order to compare apps side by side when considering motor planning and vocabulary, I made what I call the Motor Planning Apps to Grammar Scale, or MAGS. And you'll see as we go on, to the far left are apps that focus really in depth on motor planning, where there's not much emphasis at first on grammar, it's about memorizing that location. And apps to the far right focus heavily on grammar. And there may be situations where a student would prefer an AAC app that focuses on grammar because they have very good functioning vocabulary. Maybe they just can't speak it. Maybe they're hearing impaired and want to rely on something other than just sign all the time. Because if you walk into McDonald's, are you going to be able to sign to the person working the register and have them understand what you're trying to say? You can use an app for that. So to start us off, we're going to look at the polar opposites on the mag scale. Plant words for life and speak for yourself. Very similar apps. And we're going to compare them to Prolo for text. It looks kind of like a word processor, but you can store sentences. You also have quick talk features, so you can have short phrases that are social. Excuse me. You're welcome. I'm fine, thanks. You also have robust word prediction. You also have word prediction. Obviously, Proloquo for Text really benefits those that are already readers, and they have a really good vocabulary, but they have trouble verbally communicating. It's great that you can store phrases and do quick social cues back and forth, and you have word prediction, though there's not really motor planning involved in here. It's menus. Quite the opposite of something like Lamp Words for Life, where everything is very abstract. As you see, the images aren't very clear, but that doesn't matter because it's built toward motor planning. The pictures are really placeholders. For example, why would the dog have a piece of paper in its mouth for the word come like it's the 1950s and we all throw our paper for the dog to go get or the dog brings us the paper? Well, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that that picture looks different from everything else around it, and the location is distinct. Now since we, the communication partners, the people modeling these applications, are usually very good at grammar and syntax, something like this really throws us off. Because this is not how we learned to communicate. We didn't rely on motor planning and positioning and these really interesting word associations. We didn't learn just by motor planning alone. But Lamp Words for Life is particularly designed for kids with autism. Not exclusively for autism, but that was a focal point. And they've brought in neurologists and a lot of people to make this app great. And I want to show you some really great features it has to facilitate motor planning. And one of the first ones, and this is a theme throughout a lot of the apps on here, is what I call pop-ups. So when you click a word, the screen doesn't just go into a fall menu and you get lost in fall folders like you're going through the C drive on your computer. Instead, it changes and opens up that category in a temporary space. So it pops up on the screen. As you see, the original word usually stays around the same location. 
but you have the words associated with it. So if I clicked I, I will see I want. I don't have to look at two places at once. I don't have to find want by itself because if you go to use the pronoun I, it can't sit by itself. And another feature that we look at apps is what I call snap back. So let's say you popped up and you went to these menus. How are you going to get back? How do you get back to the home page? In LAMP, you just pick the word choice you were looking for and it brings you back home. No backspacing. Can you imagine how many times you would have to hit the back button if an app did not bring you back to the start after you picked your word? And that messes up your motor plan. Every time your motor plan would be a little bit different. LAMP works around that by popping up a menu and then snapping back. Everything from its symbol set, which is MinSpeak, to the color coding, its navigation system, snapping back and popping up, the large grid size, and the inclusion of conjugations, the different forms of a virtually, make this a great tool for motor planning that can actually grow into syntax, but starting with a motor plan and the location, and eventually bringing meaning to what the symbols are through modeling and practice. Now, Speak for Yourself is very similar in approach to LAMP Words for Life, and that's why I have them ranked side by side. The big differences are going to be discussed in the feature section, where I think the operating on the communication partner and to set it up is easier. You also have images that are a little less abstract than Ben Speak. These are called Smarty Symbols. And you still have pop-ups when you select a word that gives you other categories. And they give you different conjugations to choose from. And when you pick one, it will snap you back to the very beginning. A really great app. And we will go into the features of why this is one of the more easier ones to operate in the feature section. Our next comparison will be between Sonoflex and TouchChat HD. You notice that already, since we're no longer comparing the two extremes on the mag scale, the apps start to look similar in scope. There are buttons and locations and less sentences and phrases and typing. Also, starting with Sonoflex, you'll see that the symbol sets, in this case, symbol sticks, in my opinion, are a little bit more concrete, and communication partners seem to struggle less interpreting what these pictures mean. You notice both the picture and the word now. As you'll see with Sonoflex, it provides pop-ups, and when I pick my word, it snaps me back to the beginning. So it has those motor planning features. However, that's about it. With Sonoflex, you can't edit the grid, and when we talk about features, it'll be the bottom of the totem pole. But the plus side is you can't mess anything up because there's no editing. These categories are what you have. This grid size is what you have. But I think this provides a really good short-term solution to practice using motor planning and becoming a better communication partner to then grow into something larger and still compared to a lot of things you will find on the App Store, this is certainly one of the better apps out there. TouchChat HD is another great app that you can get from iTunes. It's the next progression on the grammar side of the mag scale because it combines motor planning symbol sets with an emphasis on whole words. TouchChat has a few good vocabulary options that I'll show you, but this particular one we're starting on is word power on a 60 vocabulary grid. Now I'm going to type the phrase, I want more. You can see when I press I, some word associations pop up, while others already on the page stay the same. I click want and it snaps us back to that front page. Now I can pick the word more. I want more. Great motor planning features to make communicating more intuitive because you'll be doing it so much. However, this doesn't always work without hitting a backstace button uh, when ending on a French word, for example. I'm going to type in, I eat pizza. There I have to press the food button to pop up an entirely new page to find pizza. And when I press pizza, the page stays the same, except for the word with. Now I have to pick something else on this page or hit the home button to go all the way back. I mentioned that there was a lot of options for vocabulary grid sizes. Here they are. 
I wish I could go through every single one of them, but another one of my favorites is the core vocabulary set here. Now, this could come in handy, and the difference between this and Perillo Quo for text readies the core vocabulary words that a communicator needs to focus on the most and places them in a grid that will give you quick access, color coding, and motor planning so it's quicker to find the words you need and they're the ones right up front. If you're trying to say something, here is a core word to do it. So the motor planning is here, but it's not nearly as robust as it would be for Lamp Words for Life and Speak for Yourself but it's a little bit more focus on the whole word and grammar itself. Our next two apps, before we get in the exact middle of the mag scale, are Clicker Communicator and Compass. Now, Communicator uses symbol sticks like some of the previous apps and continues color coding, which helps motor planning. However, there are no pop-ups or snapbacks. I can type, I want more but word associations don't appear on the screen. It also becomes tedious if you have to pick options that make you leave the page. For example, I will type, you play more with mom. To find play, I have to go into the action folder. Now, I can't get back unless I hit the home button, and I could potentially get lost in all these other subfolders within this folder. Now, to find with, I need to enter another folder, which is called words. It's still not there. I need to go into yet another folder called on and in because that's associated with prepositions like with. Again, a lot of grammar knowledge to know that's why it would be there. Now I can pick with, but I still need to go back home and to find mom, I access the people folder and finally my phrase is complete. The good things about the app are that it's simple and you can't edit and mess anything up like Sonoflex. It is what it is. However, the lack of snapback and pop-ups really inhibits this from being a long-term tool. Now, Compass has a very different approach for what we've seen so far. There are not any pop-ups or snapbacks. If I type I want more on the first page, you'll see the white column gives me different forms of my verbs and some verbs that are associated, like choose. The color coding and simplicity design on the first page is very helpful. And if you have the money, you can purchase additional symbol sets besides these board maker images, like symbol sticks if you wanted to. But you can get lost in these fringe categories in the pink column. If I click places and pick park, I'm stuck on this page, I can't snap back, and I have to press the X button to return. Also by default, we have all these other settings turned on, like quick fires, quick phrases, topics slash custom grids you can create, and the dashboard that lets you go into advanced features, um, including stuff like environmental controls. So you can view Compass like a communication slash accessibility suite. However, it, it possibly requires the most setup uh, to make it fit student or, or child's need. Some of these things you may not want to have there. You may want to take off some of these folders that you can get lost in. You may want to put things on the front page. It requires some work. Finally, in the very center of the motor planning to grammar scale apps, we have Prolo to go. Um, when it first started several years ago, it received a lot of criticism. And I personally associate this with it being a jack of all trades and a master of none. I didn't do enough on the grammar end of the scale, and it didn't do enough on the motor planning end. However, now they have so many great features that if you're savvy enough about the program, you can customize it to fit any in on that mag scale. You need to be motor planning, grammar, syntax, or a combination of the two. Uh, firstly, we can go full whole words, symbols, or any combination in between. By default, it doesn't have snapback, but you just turn it on and it makes it more conducive to motor planning. You can even turn off different parts of speech and verb conjugations that you may or may not be focusing on depending on how much grammar and syntax you currently need. Interestingly, not only do you have pop-ups that pull additional associated words while keeping some of the original words on the front page, you can also select conjugations by and tense by just holding down your finger on the words with shaded corner. So that's their approach to showing conjugations and not taking up a lot of space and be able to have more core words present. Here I have different forms of the word want. I can preview their sounds. 
and I can also pick a pronoun type or let it narrow it down. When I pick you, you see wanted, want, and will want. And if I press not, you see the correct grammar choices for not wanting something with that pronoun. Now the good news is, as I pointed out, you can change this in the settings and take out grammar altogether and conjugations altogether. And I really like having the choice to do that in my app besides having to purchase one that does one or the other. The last app I want to talk about in isolation is Avaz. It's the only app on this list available on Android and the only one that I would recommend on Android. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. You have color coding, symbol sticks as the symbol set, and you do have core vocabulary words. Those three reasons alone make it the best on Android devices. However, there aren't any snapback features, pop-ups, and the grid size is limited to only 24 locations max. I would consider it a starter app like Communicator or Sonoflex, but without as many strengths. If you're only able to use Android, this is probably the best choice you currently have out there. Now let's discuss features to consider in all apps regardless of the mag scale. Firstly, vocabulary and grid size is very important because if you start off with a small grid and then go to a larger grid, everything changes, including your motor plan. Ideally, you want a large grid size with an option to hide something for later. Our best grid sizes are our Prolo Quo to Go, Touch Chat HD, Lamp, Compass, and Speak for Yourself. Apps that provide the option to hide locations are listed here. The most impressive one is Speak for Yourself, which allows you to simply click Open Close, pick the words you want to hide or reappear, say you're done, and then turn off the babble mode, where you have the more limited vocabulary you selected displayed, and you simply turn on babble to return it to a full grid. Certainly the easiest app on the market, hands down, that allows you to make vocabulary choices without disrupting the motor plan. You also have to consider keyboards on AAC apps. Uh, sometimes students may become fixated and only want to talk about certain things. For instance, I had a student only use the keyboard and not the core words to say Robin, Batman, and all the characters from Teen Titans. So we turn off the keyboard for only a couple weeks and his attention focused more to core vocabulary, communicating more appropriately in different situations. And overall, the iPad became a better communication tool, and we were able to bring in those robust features that keyboard gives you, unlimited vocabulary, later on. You also have to consider how the communication partners will deal with a keyboard. Uh, I stress the AAC, especially motor planning, takes a different state of mind to execute. Sometimes a communication partner may unintentionally make the app a chore instead of a tool to talk about your environment and what's going on. Uh, and Apple could be using the app routinely to just type out spelling words and practice for that spelling test at the end of the week and that, that's not really best practice, certainly not at the very beginning stage. The following apps have keyboards built in and if you believe the user or communication partner aren't quite ready for a keyboard yet, here are the ones that allow you to turn it off. I think most have experienced what occurs when a child gets on your phone or tablet and destroys your organization. Uh, these apps let you password protect the settings at editing menu, so only the communication partner with a password can change the grids and all the special settings. Uh, keep in mind, some apps don't have editing in the first place, so there's nothing to worry about. Some students may not just fixate on words, but may possibly try to drive you insane by pressing a key over and over again just to get a reaction from you. In other words, you may want an app that turns off repetition of keys where you only press that key one time in a row and two times wouldn't make the key do anything. You would have to go to a different word choice. You can also use hold duration that makes you press down a key for X amount of time before it selects and speaks it. Uh, this can also help users focus a bit more on what they want to say instead of quickly going through selections. Just keep in mind that anything, in my opinion, above 0.5 seconds, a half second, is excruciatingly slow and can be very frustrating. One of the features that is great for motor planning is auto clear message, which erases the white box 
after completing a phrase and playing it. So you don't have to click the clear button every single time you're ready to say a new sentence or a new phrase. Select on release is slightly different. You may duration since you can slide your hand across, find the one you want, and then pick up on your hand to select it. This helps users who struggle to select a single word box in the grid on the first try. So if you have trouble honing in on the exact choice you want, you may hit a word by accident. This is a very good option. Lastly, there are only two that have switch scanning features for those that require external buttons to operate the AAC app. Uh, personally, I think devices you buy from manufacturers do a much better job of switch scanning than a tablet app, but that is for a different video. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope it gave you some ideas of structure and features you can consider when choosing an AAC app. We really want to continue making these videos and getting real world examples of AAC in action. So subscribing and liking this video really helps us out. Thank you again.